All right, I've got my reference here, and I don't know the model's name. I apologize to her. It's from uh, newmastersacademy.org, uh, a wonderful organization that I work with, and they uh, provide uh, most of the reference that I use, which is lovely. So thanks to them. Uh, okay, so we're going to do a little quick sketch here of this, or maybe not so quick, I'm not sure. Let me adjust my chair here a little bit and bang my knee. All right, so as I sketch, I'm going to try and work, as always, with simple yet characteristic shapes. As simple as possible, but as characteristic as possible. So there's a balancing act between how simple can I get it without letting it be generic. So here could be a simple shape for the head, not very good. It's super simple, that's great, check, but it's terrible in terms of being characteristic of what I see. In other words, if I were to uh, start out with a lump of clay in this shape, I would have a ton of sculpting to do to get to anything close to that particular person and that young woman in that particular pose. So I want to get uh, my shape or shapes as simple as I can, but as close as possible to that sculptural idea. So if I decide to take the drawing or the painting farther, I just have to add a little bit of clay or take away a little bit of clay and not uh, chisel the heck out of it. So that's kind of my, my uh, criteria here. And as I do this, as I draw my art, I'm going to confess that sometimes I dance. Now, if you were able to, I wouldn't allow it, but if you were able to talk to my family, they would tell you what an absolutely horrible dancer I am. But I can't dance for you on camera, so I'll let my fingers dance. Uh, but that doesn't matter. Uh, what I really want to do is involve my body and as much of my body as possible, my whole body, and that's a great uh, argument for working from an easel, and I draw quite a bit as well as paint from an easel, and we will at some point here have uh, the camera set up so we can work from the easel. Uh, and you'll probably see me, you know, move my moves for you there a little bit. But uh, the real point is, I want to get my body into this creative state. And it's very much like meditation. In fact, I think of art uh, as uh, doing the art we're doing together as a moving meditation. And uh, that's not totally unique in the East, in Japan. Um, all art is considered exactly that. And it, uh, it took me a while to discover uh, that that idea was uh, not unique, that it's really, as all good ideas are, um, it's um, been around for a while. So the, the idea is if I can get my body uh, to support the creative state I'm hoping to have my mind move into and my wrist follow through as I work, if I can get into that, and specifically, if I can get, move towards a, a, a creative flow, it's called now, the flow state. Uh, one of the easiest ways to get into the flow state, well, there's two quite easy ways. Well, there's three ways. One's not so easy. One is you meditate in a Tibetan cave for um, 30 years and achieve enlightenment or some version of, of quiet mind connecting to the universe kind of state. Uh, and I highly recommend that. I haven't been able to do that yet. Uh, in fact, I've really very recently begun to, to meditate uh, in the traditional sense. But the other way to get into that is not that Tibetan cave and that, uh, that deep uh, aesthetic practice over years and years and years, but uh, to do extreme sports, say. Go uh, rock climbing Yosemite in America here uh, without a rope. 
or ski off, you know, get dropped by a helicopter onto a mountain and, um, and uh, shoot down there on your skis. And if you survive, it will be because you have kicked into a flow state. So extreme sports, uh, they've, they found, and there's been a lot of study on it now. There's a wonderful and quite famous book called Stealing Fire that talks about that. Um, flow states are uh, quickly attained by the extreme athletes. Um, surfing, skateboarding, skiing, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but the other place where it happens on a regular basis is right here on the canvas or paper. We artists are quite good at uh, moving into flow states. Uh, and again, there's been lots of studies to that effect. And so I want, I want to try and get, get to that place as often as I can because I'm going to produce better art and it feels so good. There's all these chemicals. There's five different chemicals that, um, that um, kick in. Pleasure chemicals, bonding chemicals, uh, community, love, creativity chemicals. There's five of them that do, that uh, create a cocktail that together put you in this wonderful creative place called flow, flow state. And so if I can move my body and relax my breathing and quite often and you'll if you uh, pay attention and I'll try and call it out uh, from time to time on the videos if you pay attention you'll you'll uh, notice uh, well maybe you won't because I talk so damn much on these things but uh, the, I notice uh, my my uh, breathing changes and when that happens I kind of lock into uh, that more creative place and there's there's to, degrees of it. You know, it's not a one-size-fits-all. But if you can get into that relaxed state, uh, that focused state, and after all these years of teaching, um, you know, demo, doing demos in front of students, actually talking about art for me is a uh, kind of a flow trigger in a way. I, I kind of uh, get into that uh, place um, just by talking about it uh, to some degree, it seems like. So uh, whether you're quiet in the studio, which is what you'll probably be doing, or uh, you're uh, in this great creative discussion with your friends about what is art and the meaning of life and all this wonderful stuff, uh, you might find that your breathing pattern changes. It gets deeper and slower. And uh, sometimes I'll get this kind of rush of adrenaline. It's not really adrenaline, it's a, it's a uh, dopamine, this rush of uh, satisfaction um, that um, lets me to know also that I'm moving into some, some level of that same state. Okay, so... Um, I'm just going to take a second here. If one of the things you can do before you start drawing, and I'll do, I'm trying to, as I said, I'm learning to meditate. So I'm trying to take the mornings. I actually did not do it this morning, I must confess. But I'm taking the morning uh, and taking lessons, actually, because I'm that new at it. I've dabbled in it, but uh, I'm taking a, a meditation course. Uh, actually, I'll give it a plug. It's Emily Fletcher. Uh, the M word from a Mind Valley course, which is a wonderful uh, company, um, and she's just terrific. She's charming and funny and uh, knows her stuff. And so I'm I'm doing her meditation course. But anyway, trying to get in the morning a little bit of a uh, of a relaxation going in the body. So just a, a quick thing I'll do before I start, if I remember, and I don't always remember, and I'm trying to get better. We all have things to work on, and me too. Uh, I'll, I'll tr go through a quick breathing, a deep breathing. So I'll breathe in through my nose for the count of two to four. Hold it for just a moment and then breathe out through my nose or mouth, it doesn't matter. Better to breathe in through your nose. Um, 
uh, for a count of 4 to 8. So 2 to 4 in, 2 plus in, 4 plus out, in, out. Holding it for just a moment at each high and low point. Hold the breath, hold the lack of breath, cycle again. And then I'll just visualize, and this is from Emily, which I love. Uh, I'll visualize the energy, kind of earth energy, just uh, I'll feel it come up through my feet, just imagining it, just the imagination of that creative life energy coming up through my body, all the way up through my body, and then giving it back, receiving it and giving it, coming in through me and out to you, and I'll breathe out that creativity and that, uh, that uh, the positive vibes or whatever. Um, out through and I create this cycle and I'll do that four or five six times uh, just to relax and uh, to relax into my art state because what I want to do is when I come into the studio it's a new world it's like going through the portal in a fantasy s story you go into this imaginary wonderful magical place in this case it's a place of creativity and I want my body and my brain to know this is a new place. This is not surviving on the freeways of L.A. or uh, going out in the freezing cold to, to hope your car starts in Montana. This is a different place. This is not a place where you have to contend and survive and you got the to-do list. This is a place where you're trying to create, bring things up and let them out onto the paper, onto the canvas. So anyway, that's my tip for the day. We will see you next time. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you again. Thanks so much.